hey what's up guys this is AJ and as uh, we discussed uh, in a previous video we are going to discuss the crux of the yojana okay so before starting this video I will uh, say few points uh, video quality is poor I know you must have been hearing so many background noises uh, kindly bear with it okay uh, the problem with me is that uh, I I don't have enough resources uh, to make uh, aesthetic values of this video better okay so but what I can give you is uh, some content okay so if you are here to you know get a um, very good slideshow or anything or uh, that uh, kindly watch any other video because it is not possible by me but if you want a uh, good quality then uh, I'm here for you okay so how we complete these uh, things okay so uh, you are going to listen to my voice uh, you are going to make notes out of those uh, points that I dictate and you are going to revise those notes that will be sufficient okay so there are so many channels on YouTube uh, how we are different okay so we are different because uh, we have poor quality of video <laughs> we can say that but uh, most probably is that uh, our difference is uh, quality okay so what quality that uh, notes quality okay so what exactly you are going to write in your answers okay that is what I am going to dictate okay not nothing superficial I am not going to talk anything superficial uh, anything that is not necessary for uh, you or me to write in our answers okay uh, so that is the difference between other channels and our channel okay so again one more point is that uh, I'm not I promote you or I motivate you to watch other channels okay I will uh, I have benefited from them a lot so I will encourage you to uh, watch the videos of those channels like learning space is there only is is there okay an academy is there fantastic pandas are there there are so many channels okay study IQ is also a biggest channel okay so I will encourage you to watch this channel as well as if you get time and if you feel like watching my videos then you also watch uh, videos of mine okay so let's start our discussion in today's discussion we are going to discuss the uh, energy security yojana okay so as I told you in a previous video also okay, that uh, for every yojana you have to read the preface of its yojana why to read a preface because uh, while well, uh, if you read the preface you will find out that how to introduce a particular topic as well as how to close the particular topic okay how to maintain a flow okay so these things you will get from the preface and these things you are going to use in your essays okay so that's why what I will suggest you is to write down the uh, or uh, read down the, all the prefaces okay as many as you can okay so now what I am going to do is that uh, uh, this if I start to explain uh, this yojana it is going to you know take uh, at least one and a half hour okay if I tell you about every each and every point under this yojana it is going to take you uh, I'm uh, it is going to take me one and a half hours okay for one particular yojana okay but uh, that is not possible okay for me also and for you also that you will be very tired to uh, listen uh, from me for one and a half hours okay so what I am going to do is that I am going to assume that uh, you know you are preparing for uh, UPSC for at least past year okay uh, so you must be familiar with so many topics okay so I am not going to explain you fundamental or basic things okay I am not going to waste my time as well as yours okay so if you are uh, confused with the basic things or if you don't understand a particular thing that I dictate okay you uh, Google is a uh, very freely available and Google is a best teacher okay? so you can Google it and find it on your own okay as well as if you find something by your own uh, probability is uh, more that you will remember these things okay so it will be beneficial for you also so I'm just going to skim through these notes of mine okay so just uh, don't then again after the video you do should not complain that okay you have missed so many points what I am telling you is that uh, you should uh, 
read yojana by yourself okay uh, if you are not reading then this uh, video is uh, little bit helpful okay if you are reading the yojana by yourself and then you are watching this video then it will be more helpful for you as well as uh, one more point is that i want to mention here is that uh, you know you want to or you have to uh, download the pdf of so yojana and after uh, downloading pdf uh, you should uh, see the flow charts or the diagrams in inside the yojana magazine okay uh, they will give you idea uh, how to explain a pure point or your content in a graphical interface okay so uh, if you draw these types of flow chart uh, flow charts or pie charts or any type of graphs uh, in your answer sheet then uh, examiner gets uh, very happy and he gives you more marks okay ultimately we are fighting for marks okay so one mark is uh, also a very good step towards our dream okay so that's why what i am suggest i suggest to you is to go through by yourself Uh, focus on this point like preface uh, flow charts uh, few um, extra points or any scheme that they have uh, they talk in inside the uh, uh, a particular block inside that particular yojana okay so focus on these things as well as uh, you watch my videos you will get uh, enough points okay so let's start so there is a keyword in the preface intelligent abundance in the energy security yojana okay Uh, so what is the intelligent abundance means what that we have a traditional knowledge okay so india is rich with a traditional knowledge india is in, we have intelligent people as well as intelligent methods to tackle uh, our day to day life problems as well as uh, sustainable development problems okay we are going to we must uh, focus on those points okay next point is what are the aspects of uh, energy security okay so there are four aspects of energy security first is availability second is reliability third is affordability and fourth is sustainability okay uh, then how to define energy security uh, see energy security has a uh, following aspects okay uh, what are those supply payment uh, demand safe and convenient and competitive pricing means means what uh, it should be easily available it should be uh, you know payment should be very uh easily available then the methods of payment should be easily available as well as uh, it should satisfy our demand it should be very safe to travel uh, to transport or as well as to uh, fill inside your vehicle okay or a, uh, your customer end user uh, must be uh, must not have to you know do so many tasks just to use this uh, energy okay so it will be it should be very convenient to end user as well as competitive pricing means what that uh, like jio jio introduced in the market as uh, what happened every other company started uh, reducing their price why because market uh, competition in market increased yeah, because of the introduction of the jio same thing should happen in the energy security also that uh, market should uh, be competitive so that end user will be uh, get a better and better prices okay so next point uh, we are going to dictate discuss is uh, again you must be familiar that uh, 80% of the crude oil uh, that we india need we import it okay so this is the fun fact like uh, again this import uh, can uh, cause us a bop crisis what is bop crisis you find out by yourself next is uh, we have uh, we introduced uh, new energy new exploration licensing policy in 1997 okay so now we have help okay what is help you uh, find out uh, for that you use vision uh, okay vision has uh, one uh, issue in which they have covered help okay so next india power systems can be classified into two grids okay we have two grids which are these first grid is uh, short form of the first grid is any w any grid okay so what is the long form north eastern western and north eastern okay uh, this kind of uh, one grid we have and next is the rest is the southern gate okay it is not uh, important for you to remember but uh, for understanding purpose you should know that we have two grids okay next is uh, there is a brutland commission they have given a one particular defini uh, definition of sustainable development 
Brutland Commission gave an one definition of sustainable development. What is that? So meeting of the needs of the present generation without compromising the needs of the future generation. That is the definition given by the uh, Brutland Commission. Okay. So why I am say trading with this definition because in uh, like uh, your preparation you should like sustainable development. If you have this definition, you can use it in any type of uh, introduction. Okay. Or any type of conclusion. Then uh, next point is energy intensity ratio. What is this? A ratio of energy input to gross domestic product means what? Like uh, if I how much energy I am investing and how much GDP is increasing. So if you take the ratio of these things, we will get an energy intensity ratio. Okay. So then what? Uh, our India's uh, energy intensity ratio is obviously declining. Okay, if you compare with China, then there is a huge gap between India's uh, intensity ratio, energy intensity ratio, as well as China's inten energy intensity ratio. Okay, so we what we need for that to increase this uh, energy intensity ratio, we need supercritical and ultra critical energy plants. Okay, then we have uh, TDCC losses are uh, very uh, high in uh, India. What are the TDC uh, losses? Uh, transmission, distribution, and com commercial losses. Okay, so we, we call it in short, short form TD and CE losses. Okay, next is the Energy Conservation Act of 2001. Okay, why we introduce this again? We have to conserve the energy so there will be a sustainable development. Okay, what is the Brutland uh, Commission's de uh, definition of sustainable development? That uh, we have to satisfy the needs of the present as well as we have to. Uh, consider the needs of the future okay so to give the energy in the future we have to conserve the energy so that's why we have energy conservation act 2001 then we have uh, you know there is a energy code uh, for buildings okay then we have perform achieve trade schemes means what it is just like a Kyoto protocol uh, in Kyoto protocol we have carbon trading if a particular company uh, emits uh, less carbon then the remaining amount of carbon that they were allowed to you know emit they can trade it okay so same thing we have introduced like perform achieve and trade if a particular uh, company is using too much energy and if uh, by introducing a new technology if it is able to uh, reduce this uh, energy consumption then at that time how the amount of energy that they conserved or uh, they saved they can sell that amount of uh, that uh, energy uh, units uh, to other companies and get a monetary benefit okay so this is called perform achieved in trade okay so next point what we introduce uh, appliances uh, must be like we have an uh, efficiency meter on every appliances if you go to the any electronic showroom you will find out that the four star rating is there five star rating appliances are there okay so you can uh, identify a particular uh, efficiency of a particular uh, uh, electronic equipment okay, by looking at its uh, energy rating then uh, standards and labeling scheme again that is the same uh, energy conservation uh, building code that I told you earlier that we have code for uh, buildings if a new building is developing then at that time it should have these many things uh, to just to uh, achieve the lower consumption by that uh, particular building so what we call it as a energy conservation building code okay we have Rajiv Gandhi Gramin Vidyuti Karan Yojana okay uh, uh, there is a huge problem in India of fuel subsidy okay so we have uh, benefited like uh, many people get now that's why we have like a LPG uh, give up Yojana was there by uh, introduced by the Honorable Prime Minister Narendra Modi okay so what was the Yojana that uh, many people don't require they hire in the inside the high income group okay so they they don't require actually to get subsidy for LPG cylinders at that time what happened uh, they give up their cylinder uh, their subsidy so it reduced the burden on the government's expenditure so government can you use this uh, funds for the betterment of the poor people okay so this is nothing but the one method okay so to achieve uh, again we can okay if you get uh, more uh, gas cylinders then you are going to give those uh, gas cylinder you can give to the 
poorest of the poor people okay so their energy needs will be satisfied then national solar mission we have okay national mission for uh, enhanced energy efficiency that we have okay so next point is now what to do okay so the yojana talks about now what to do so there should be commercialization of enterprises okay next point is make them accountable autonomous and uh, report annually to the parliament third point is measuring environment cost and fixing prices fourth po uh, point is subsidies only to bpl again uh, don't give subsidies to the higher income group or middle class people okay just give the subsidies to bpl as well as small and marginal farmer then uh, single window approach to give permission to energy supplying enterprises next point is environment impact assessment but uh, to be time bound okay so there should be periodically environmental impact assessment okay next is a knowledge based independent accountable or regulating agency again we need a regulating agency uh, to monitor these all things okay what is happening in energy sector who is producing how much energy how is consuming how much energy who is destroying the environment okay so to look after these points we need a independent regulatory agency a white paper again uh, to add on uh, adverse impact of inefficient management of energy enterprises okay find out this adverse impact of uh, energy on the environment okay because we ultimate gain, gain is what as per the butland commission we have uh, to have a sustainable development otherwise okay so if i tell you that uh, in 2015 if we uh, you know consume the all the resources uh, with such a rate okay we are going to go, uh, go out of the resources at uh, in 2050 what will happen so many people will not uh, you know live after 2050 that is not uh, okay so we need to have a sustainable development we have to uh, use our resources carefully so energy is the biggest resource we have as well as it as consumes the biggest resources we have so uh, it needs to be sustainable otherwise it is hopeless then rail saver by indian railway we have uh, one portal on internet rail saver okay so through this uh, rail saver portal uh, indian railway takes the measures or uh, takes the actions regarding uh, sustainability like energy conservation okay. uh, then composite development index is there okay so what is that uh, i am not going to de inside a detail just po i will just point out that uh, most of the time what we happens uh, we calculate gdp okay and we based on gdp we compare the growth of a particular country so this gdp only talks uh, take care the uh, point of uh, income per capita okay it only considers uh, income per capita uh, it doesn't consider consumption per capita okay so that's why we introduced this uh, one committee formed under the uh, when rbi governor was uh, raghuram rajan mr raghuram rajan uh, under uh, his chairmanship no he was not chairman but he stated that there should be a committee okay so it will uh, give a particular index and uh, on based on this index we are going to you know make some policy changes so this was the topic inside the yojana i am not going to dictate this point okay because uh, what is the what was the main point i have dictated and even if you don't know then it is also fine because it is not that much important for exam next point is what uh, rural house okay so what i will suggest you to remember this point okay it is very important point most of the time you don't get this kind of uh, point as well as you don't focus on this kind of points okay so what is the point see uh, if a particular rural household uh, rural household is there okay the, if the imagine that uh, they are earning 100 rupees per month so in rural area if they you know for to if they satisfy their energy needs they have to pay 6% of their uh, monthly income okay 6% of uh, monthly income means what at least 6 rupees they have to pay uh, uh, to the uh, set to satisfy their energy needs okay but in uh, urban area what happens if a particular household earns 100 rupees at that time urban area uh, to satisfy their energy needs they have to pay 4% of their budget okay so there is a difference the rural in a rural households they are paying high cost to satisfy the their energy needs but the there is a uh, different pos uh, situation in the urban areas they are paying in comparison with rural they are paying actually less fees but that should not be the case okay 
बिकॉज हु इज अंडर डेवलप्ड ऑब्वियसली रूरल इज अंडर डेवलप्ड सो दे शूड कंज्यूम मोर एंड मोर एनर्जी बट देर इज अ प्रॉब्लेम बिकॉज दे आर पेइंग हाय कॉस्ट सो मेनी पीपल आर रिफ्रेनिंग फ्रॉम यू नो यूजिंग द ट्रेडिशनल एनर्जी रिसोर्सेस दे सॉरी लाइक डेवलप्ड एनर्जी रिसोर्सेस लाइक इलेक्ट्रिसिटी और पेट्रोल सो दे आर नॉट यूजिंग दिस रिसोर्सेज दे आर वॉट दे आर डूइंग दे आर बर्निंग कोल दे आर बर्निंग फ्यू वूड ओके फॉर कुकिंग पर्पजेज दे आर नॉट यूजिंग एल पी जी दे आर यूजिंग वुड्स वुड और एनी अदर थिंग्स दैट आई हैव सीन दैट पीपल बर्न द पेपर्स ओके सो दे इट दीज थिंग्स कॉजेस कॉजेस अस वेरी हाई प्राइज इनडायरेक्टली हाउ बिकॉज इट डिस्ट्रॉयज द एनवायरमेंट दैट वी लिव इन ओके सो टू अवॉइड दिस वॉट वी नीड टू डू इज दैट वी नीड टू मेक अवेलेबिलिटी ऑफ energy uh, at a cheaper cost to rural households okay so that is the biggest challenge we have okay so what are the uh, reasons behind uh, uh, the uh, behind the high price high prices paid by the rural households uh, for energy consumption uh, you this is your task okay this is your assignment you need to find out what are the reasons why they are paying high cost okay so again there is a one case study given in the yojana about japan what is the ja- case study in japan that uh, okay so i will give you uh, i will explain this uh, see in india what we do is that 80% of our total uh, crude oil we export uh, import sorry 80% of the crude oil we import from uh, most of the time it is from the middle east countries okay uh, so what happens if uh, anything a particular war is going on or if there is a instability in the uh, middle east our energy security uh, gets threatened okay okay so our uh, import reduces uh, because there is a war going on okay so we don't we are not fully c- compatible with these kind of situations okay uh, so uh, at that point many scholars argue us that uh, we should not import such a huge amount of uh, petrol or crude oil from other countries at the same time there is a example of japan okay so what happens in japan in japan uh, they 100 japan is 100% dependent on uh, energy security okay uh, so if it wants to consume a petrol then it has to buy that petrol from other sources uh, they don't have their own sources okay for 100% they are dependent on other countries but still they uh, we consider it as a energy secure country okay so uh, there is enough energy uh, available to every person okay uh, so why because they have de- taken some policy decisions they have some strategic ties they have some resources okay so what is this uh, what how they achieved energy security even after importing uh, so much amount of or like al- almost 100% of their energy needs okay uh, that we need to study and after studying this uh, we if you can then we should implement uh, those points or those things in india also okay so we just should not uh, always uh, take a stand that you know uh, there should be import substitution no that is not possible even if uh, we import 100% we should be energy secured country and to achieve that we should uh, learn from japan okay that is the point then uh, again again one more point is there that you need to remember is that uh, in 2031 and in 2051 what is going to happen uh, if you compared with the 2001 levels we are going to our energy requirements are going to uh, raise as much high as 12 times the uh, our energy requirements in 2001 okay so in 2001 let's like say we uh, consumed x amount of energy then in 2051 how much amount of energy we are going to consume 12x okay so what is happening now uh, at the same time like uh, uh, like we have a 175 gigawatts of renewable renewable energy targets okay so we want to implement these targets uh, before 2022 okay so uh, for that Uh, like the author says of that particular chapter in yojana 
that uh, share of the renewable energy uh, in 2031 will be 7 percent if you follow the current speed uh, or the if you see the current growth rate of the renewable energy and if you keep on going uh, with this growth rate what will happen in 2031 that uh, our how much uh, energy will be satisfied by the renewable energy uh, 7 percent only why because e even if we are increasing the production of renewable energy uh, at the same time the demand of energy is also increasing very rapidly okay so there should be you know we, if you want to catch up or if you want to use at least 50 percent of the uh, energy requirements uh, with the help of renewable energy then we have to do some extraordinary measures that is the point the author makes okay. next point is what let me see uh, again so India's estimated coal sources uh, are 267.21 billions okay again this point I will explain you in brief okay so because uh, the time of the video is increasing uh, so I will explain it in brief uh, that uh, uh, we have a high number of coal so reserves but we cannot exploit all of the reserves why because uh, so many things that these coal reserves may be under the tribal area may be under the forest may be under the cement jungle that we live in okay so uh, due to s these constraints we cannot exploit all the full capacity of uh, our coal that we have okay so what we do we exploit uh, like extract at least uh, 21 million metric tons uh, per annum okay uh, so what is happen they say that if you go on continuing uh, extracting the coal from the uh, our reserves uh, at the same rate what will happen in 30-40 uh, years all the coal reserves will be uh, empty okay we will not get many po uh, any coal from uh, uh, our territory okay. so uh, uh, for that what we do in today's scenario we import coal from indonesia then australia then south africa okay as well as one more one more point is i would like to mention that is not the in the yojana but i will tell you is that uh, uh, this uh, the coal uh, the calorific value of our indian coal is very less okay in comparison with uh, australian coal or in indonesian coal okay so that is why also uh, many people refrain from using indian coal or it is uh, used as a uh, in the lower industries okay so next point is what uh, hmm. okay so what is happening in india is that uh, we are increasing the coal based power plants okay so the capacity of the core coal based power plants increased by 71 percent okay throughout one like eight to ten years previous eight to ten years uh, but at the same time the extraction of the coal is increased by only 20 percent okay so uh, consumption is increased by 70 percent and the uh, supply is uh, increased by only 20 percent then there is a supply demand gap how to fill that uh, we have to import okay so we there is a bop crisis can happen again okay so next point is uh, uh, at the same time the point uh, is there that demand for the natural gas is increasing nine percent a year okay next point is import of gas is increasing but still 10 gigawatt uh, of uh, gas based capacity was idle okay so again what is happening natural gas we don't use that much okay. next point is uh, transportation problems are there uh, then uh, with natural gas we have these kinds of problems like transportation problem what happens uh, it can get leak okay or it can explode okay so this there is a um, very tremendous risk involved in the at the time of transportation uh, then the tapi project that we are doing with uh, turkmenistan afghanistan pakistan and india uh, so this is again halt it is not going forward so what is happening our energy security is un under threat uh, shale gas problem is there okay uh, we have shale gas but it is difficult to identify as well as it is very difficult to extract okay america achieved that uh, but we are lagging behind it 
then nuclear problem is there jatapur ke study what is happening in jatapur people around the jatapur power plant as a you know strongly opposing the this project because they fear fear that you know there might be any atomic explosion and we will die due to the radiation okay uh, so so there there are these kinds of movements are go happening in india uh, nimby uh, movement means what what is the long form nimby it's a long form guy uh, not in my back backyard okay so these kind of things are happening uh, uh, solar ka solar technology is are, are very costly okay so many don't know mean not many people use solar technology so what is happening government is giving subsidies okay but uh, there are limitations okay so government cannot give 100% subsidy so again the people are not using renewable sources okay so i think uh, that uh, we will stop here okay so uh, as much uh, i think that it will take uh, more 20 or 30 minutes okay so if we keep on going discussing these things uh, in this uh, one particular region of here finding so many important points again this is what happens this is what i fear okay uh, it becomes very lengthy if i start dictating you the point even after sk skipping so many points it is becoming like 30 minutes of video okay so if you are uh, okay with it uh, let me know okay if you are okay with it i will make a whole uh, i will cover whole yojana in one video okay so uh, so thanks guys for watching this video and we will meet in a next video peace